This is the fifth part of our series on dynamic blocks. We'll walk you through the array action and how to properly associate it with a linear parameter. Let's look at a parameter that we've already used, which is the linear parameter. And this time, we're going to be looking at the array action and associate the two together. And we can do that with this parking space as an example. This parking space is 9 feet wide and 18 feet long, so it's a typical parking space size. We've already turned it into a block, so I'm going to right click on it and go into our block editor. Here we are in the editor. Let's start to apply our parameters. So firstly, what we need to do is, is we need to apply our linear parameter. So we've already done this. We're going to make sure that we do this from the right direction. So we want our parking spaces to extend downwards if we need them to. We could allow them to extend both ways, which is not a bad idea, but still, just to think about the future, I'm going to make it the default way for them to extend downwards. So we're going to start from the top here and then make our way down. Our base point happens to also be here, but that won't interfere because we're going to turn off that grip right here. So let's place our distance parameter right here. We're ready to rumble. Let's go to actions now and let's associate an array with this parameter. So, whoops, let's make sure. Yes, we clicked on array and then we'll click on our parameter right here. And then it's going to ask us to select our objects associated with it. So there it is, just that nice polyline right there. Click enter. Now it's going to ask us an interesting question. What is the distance between columns? This is assuming that we're going to be drawing from right to left or arraying from right to left. In this case, we're going down and up. So columns basically are rows in this case. So this is just terminology. So we know that the parking space width is nine feet from here to here. So we can just type in nine and then press enter. And here we are. Our linear distance now has, our linear parameter now has an array action associated with it. Here's the array right here. But we're not quite done yet because if we try to test this right now, we're going to have some problems. For example, if I go to test block right now, we'll see that if I click on the parking space, I can drag it up or down if I need to, which is great. So here it is. It's now dragging down. But if I try to drag it up, look at what happens to the other parking spaces. They all move with it, and I can therefore change their position. I don't want to do that. I want them to be fixed. You'll also see that the grip here can be moved, and it doesn't have to necessarily be at a parking space depth. So even if I go right here, the grip is kind of floating, and it's not really supposed to do that. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to close our test block editor and make this a bit more sophisticated. And how do we do that? All we need to do is click on our distance parameter, and we're going to go down here, and we're going to scroll all the way down in properties, and we're going to go to our value set. Now, we did this earlier, and this time we're going to choose something a little bit different. Instead of doing list, we're going to do it in increments. Uh, so now what we do is we're going to use increments, and we can type in our increments right here. So we want our distance to be 9 units, and our minimum this is why, why the grip was able to basically go past the parking space or before the next one, because there is no minimum, essentially. So we're also going to make that 9 so that the grip sticks with the bottom of the next parking space. So we type in 9. And then the maximum here is a constraint that, in our case, isn't really relevant, but we need to place a number here. So I recommend placing a very large number so that you can basically place almost as many parking spaces as you would need on a typical site plan, for example. So in this case, we can just type in 9,000. That will give us around 1,000 parking spaces maximum. And if that's not enough, don't worry. We could always go to 90,000 and so on and so forth. 9,000 should be good enough for any site plan that I've ever seen. So now that already helps us just a bit. And let's go and test our block. Let's see if this one's going to work as intended. Let's click on it right here. And we can see the increments are already showing. And it looks like they are showing indefinitely, which I find to be very interesting. And then I can just place my spots right here. Let's say that we place one right there. And let's do the next ones up here. Beautiful. The other parking spots are not moving. So we can technically use these two grips if we wanted to. Let's say that we wanted to get rid of one grip. Let's close our test block editor. We'll do the same thing that we did earlier. We'll click on our linear distance. And now we can go into properties and we can go all the way down into the miscellaneous tab right below the value set where we change our increments. And here's that number of grips one more time. So if I choose one instead of two, now the top one is gone. So now our proper base point will be showing itself. Let's close the block editor now that we're done with our block. Let's save our changes and let's make sure that it works. There it is. Now we have our base point and we have just one grip. It's always, if you choose one 
grip, it'll always choose the second one in your linear distance if you start from the top and then go down, for example. So two always allows for the first one to be shown, but that first one will be gone if you turn it off. And there it is. If we click on this grip right here, it's working as intended. We can now make basically a nearly an infinite amount of parking spaces if we need to without having to worry about copying and pasting too many times. And that's how this parameter and the array action works well together. Thank you very much for watching our series on dynamic blocks and how to associate parameters and actions to them. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day.